The telling of the stories is, is an important part of not feeling alone and not feeling that you have done something that caused this horrible thing to happen to you. Some of the um, people in the planning of this uh, were aware of my own story. It happened a very long time ago, but it's a story that they asked if I would be willing to tell it to help set the frame for why we are doing all of this. Um, back in 1978, I um, was in my home in the early morning hours, as I still do, writing memos at my kitchen table. And I looked up, it was August, the door was open to, to get a little fresh air, and there was a man with a gun aimed at me. And uh, there was another man outside. And they um, took me up to our guest room, and at gunpoint, they raped me repeatedly for two and a half hours. They took turns in stealing everything of value out of our home, put it into our car, and eventually, after two and a half hours, drove away. During that time, all I can think of was my seven-year-old son, who was asleep, and, and pleading with them to not make any noise and wake him, so that he might see what was happening to his mother. I thought about my husband, who was on travel, and that when he would turn the next day, he would find that both of us were dead. That's all I was thinking about. I was not thinking about my responsibilities at work or anything else. So for two and a half hours, just terrorized by that. Oh, I haven't talked about it for a long time <laughs> publicly, so excuse me if I lose my voice from time to time. But I found that the next day, well, after they finally left, I called my neighbor, who um, is still one of my very best friends, even though she hasn't lived in D.C. for a long time. And she helped me through this. I had an advocate from the very beginning. She called the police. She helped me tell the story. Um, the police were terrible, actually. There are two, two of them came, a, a, a man and a woman. The man actually put his head down on the kitchen table and went to sleep. The woman was not at all sympathetic. I told my story that my friend Kay and I went to a hospital to, to do a rape kit. And she stayed with me throughout this process. She actually was my deputy director. I was the executive director of NARAL at the time. And um, she went with me to work the next day and we told this story. There were 15 people on the staff at the time. Five of them told their stories. It was like walking into a hug. Everyone understood what each other was going through, and we supported each other. And that's what's going to happen as a result of this initiative. We're each walking into a hub with people who understand um, the trauma, no matter whether it was strangers at gunpoint, like my experience, or somebody that you knew that, um, I think it's harder if it's acquaintance right? Because you wonder if I gave up a missed signal somehow, or I wore something that gave the wrong signal. For me, people didn't believe my story. I had bruises, they believed my story. There was a rape kit, they believed my story. Um, several months later, and I won't go on and on with this, but several months later, when uh, the police were not following up with my case, they were not finding my car and all of our valuables, let alone the men who did this, I got a call in my office from a wonderful detective, Tom Kelly, who um, told me that they had arrested a couple of men last night, and their, the story from, uh, sounded very similar to mine, and could they come in and bring some photographs? I had been blindfolded. I really didn't have much of a look at them. Um, and I had gone to a hypnotist to try to, to see if he could help me remember what they looked like so I could help the police find them. And I, I couldn't be any help. But the hypnotist left me with a post-hypnotic suggestion. He said, what you're trying to do is recall. That's very different from recognition. If you ever, ever, ever see them, you will recognize them. And I did. I picked them out of the lineup.
to men. And so they did both have long um, jail sentences. They're out now. Um, this happened a long time ago. I did speak about this a lot. I gave testimony because this was back in the late 70s and early 80s when Congress for the first time was saying that women who were who became pregnant as a result of rape shouldn't have um, federal funding to cover the expenses of rape. And so I testified against that. Um, and I spoke at um, many mayoral events. Tom Kelly came to me later on and said, some anti-abortion people have shown up. They don't believe your story. They said you made it up. They even said, you know, I hear Karen claim she was once raped. Well, let me tell you, Karen is not the most beautiful, this was in an article, not the most beautiful creature in the world. So when I hear her say she was raped, my response is, you wish. And so I was getting this kind of treatment while I was telling my story. And what Heather has initiated with her project is not gonna be like that, because we're gonna be telling the stories to ourselves, to each other, it will be liberating, and um, and I, I my hope is that you know we have some good sponsors and supporting organizations now that other UNA chapters around the country will want to do something like this. We have some national sponsors like National Now is here, um, and and others, and and um, it is part of the Me Too movement. It is part of the Enough is Enough. It is part of the It's Going to Stop one day. So thank you very much for coming and and helping Heather spread the word of her, her wonderful initiative.